Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice of radio. So today, we're going to be having a look at a rather exciting Seller Stealer GX card. And initially, your reaction might be, well, see, we, we have a Seller Stealer GX. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a colorless Seller Stealer GX. And as much as I did use Google Translate for this, I did then hit up the lovely David Hockman over on Messenger. He has confirmed my thoughts and he has given us a translation. Even though he's out and about today and doesn't really have stable internet access, that's how lovely David is. So what can we say about Seller Stealer GX? Well, it's got 200 HP, which is very large for a basic GX Pokemon. It's not quite up there with Guzzlord and Wishy Washy, but... It's still pretty gosh darn high. You do have a retreat cost of 4 here, which means that buff padding can absolutely be used. Yeah, they renamed it from Borny Pads, it makes me sad, to give you an extra 50 HP, which is pretty gosh darn good. It's got a resistance to fighting, which means Buzzwall, which is pretty gosh darn good. And it's got a weakness to lightning. I'm not loving the weakness to Lightning here. Lightning is a really good typing at the moment. Something like Jolteon GX here is going to take advantage of this. But we don't have Zapdos because Zapdos doesn't hit for weakness. Unfortunately, Pikachu and Zekrom does hit for 150, which will double to 300 and KO you. It means they don't have to mess around with Electro Power to get a KO. Used to be a really good weakness, becoming a really bad weakness. Pikachu and Zekrom is probably going to be the best deck in the format. If anyone's wondering, this is essentially flying type Seller Stealer. And the fact that you're colorless means, yeah, you get double colorless energy, as do a whole bunch of non-colorless Pokemon, but you don't get any extra tricks. The good news is, the ability here is over the top nuts. According to the lovely David Hockman, and he wouldn't lie to us, he's lovely. While this Pokemon is active, prevent all effects and damage done to your Pokemon by your opponent's GX attacks. This is really, really nice. Kind of. You see, it doesn't actually stop the attacks. It stops the attacks and the effects of the attacks, but only GX attacks. So if you're against something like Pikachu and Zekrom, they can do 150 and accelerate free energy using full Blitz, but they are not then able to use Tag Bolt GX. They wouldn't do 200 to you. And then crucially, they wouldn't do 170 to one of your bench Pokemon. Because it prevents the effects of the GX attack to all of your Pokemon. But it also prevents the effects of attacks. So something like Incineroar, for instance, would not burn you. Now, the language here is very important. It prevents effects of GX attacks done to your Pokemon. So, if we were to look at something like Eevee and Snorlax Tag Team GX, they wouldn't be able to do the 210 damage and get a KO, but they would be able to draw until they've got 10 cards in hand, because that is an effect of the attack, but it's not an effect of the attack done to your Pokemon. So this is a really weird one. This can be used to block your opponent's GX attack, as long as it's a damaging GX attack, which is really, really nice, but it's not always going to work. But I'll give you a great example of when it can. Your opponent has a Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX. They've got six energy on. They probably used the first attack. They probably used full Blitz. And they're getting ready to take a big giant four prize turn by knocking out one of your Pokemon and then a bench Tapu Lele. This is essentially going to end the game. So you make sure you've got Seller Stealer in the active and then your opponent cannot use it. Sure, they can use Earn Escape Rope to get you out the active. Sure, they can use a Guzma to get you out the active. But otherwise, they've got to essentially stop the GX attack. And I think this is brilliant in Fairy decks because you can use the Rabombi from Lost Thunder, which prevents all effects of supporter cards done to your fairy Pokemon. Now, some people are playing stuff like Escape Rope. A few people are playing stuff like Pokemon Catcher. But generally, if your opponent wants to get your Pokemon out of the active, they're going to be relying on Guzma. And Rabombi turns off Guzma. So in a fairy deck, you work Celestealer in the active. Your opponent then is not able to Guzma around it. 
And then they've got to essentially not use their GX attack, and Rabombi stops the Guzma. Now, with something like Pikachu and Zekrom, they're relying on having a lot of energy attached, so that really means that you can take advantage with Gardevoir, because then Gardevoir comes up and does 180 damage based purely off the amount of energy they've got attached, which means a single energy plus a choice band, or two energy, and Gardevoir's getting a two-prize knockout. Yeah, of course, your opponent can Guzma around this ability, but there are ways to stop your opponent guzma ring around it. This is going to be great, but it's very tactical when you actually use this. You can't just blindly drop this whenever you want. You've got to make sure that it's in the active at the right time, and you've got to make sure that your opponent isn't just going to Guzma around it, but it can be absolutely brilliant. I mean, imagine something like Magikarp and Waylord Tag Team GX. Their GX attack, as long as they can get eight energy attached to it, does 100 damage to all of your Pokemon. That is absolutely devastating. Well, this will protect all of your Pokemon. It means that they don't do anything. And yeah, maybe they Guzma around it, or maybe you stop them. And maybe they just wait a turn or two to use their GX attack, but maybe that's the turn or two that lets you play an Ace Roller or a Max Potion to go ahead and heal up. Or maybe it's that turn or two which means that you can get the KO and win the game. This is a stunning ability if you can have it in the active at the right time. Otherwise, your opponent can just take it out of a non-GX attack. Now, as for the attack of Celesteela, you do 110 damage for free energy and move an energy from this to a benched Pokemon. It reminds me very, very much of the old Tornadus that saw a lot of play for a very long time. Obviously, Tornadus was a weaker version, but it was a flying Pokemon that had the same typing, weakness, resistance, etc. And for free energy, it did 80 damage and moved a basic energy, whereas Celesteela does 110 damage and moves an energy. Now, this does make a significant difference because it means you can move a double colorless energy to the bench. Now, if you move a double colorless energy to the bench, your opponent can still play something like an enhanced hammer to get rid of it, but you are still at least meaning that it doesn't get taken away by a KO on Celesteela. And look, remember that this is a colorless Pokemon. You're not hitting anything for weakness here. So hitting 110 damage while you're not hitting for weakness is a little bit of a pain. It's a little bit annoying. It is, to be frank, far from ideal. But it's a decent little attack. The thing is, not being metal means you can't use Delmise to do a little bit of extra damage, which would be awesome here, because you're going to get something like a Tapu Koko, but you're going to fall short of getting something like a Granbull or a White Kyurem, the commonly played non-GX decks, which is a little bit upsetting. Although I will say you do get a one-hit KO on Zapdos here, who is potentially better than either of those Pokemon. And with a Choice Band, you will be two-hit KOing any GX, as long as it's not Magikarp and Waylord. Even something like an Eevee and Snorlax, you're doing 140, doubled because you're doing two attacks, will be 280 and get a one-hit KO here. So, this is a nice attack. You are just resigned to two-hit KOing. It's not an attack to rely on, but as an attack which you're using purely while taking advantage of the ability, it's fine. It's quite nice. It's okay. I like that you can use double colorless energy. I like that you can preserve an energy for if it gets KO'd. But Tornadus only gave up one prize, came out many years ago, and only did 30 less damage. As for the GX attack, it's incredibly strange. The GX attack here reads, you may add all of your prize cards to your hand and then put down as many cards from the top of your deck as you picked up. That's a bit weird. Now, to be clear, this does not count as taking prize cards. You're swapping them out. So it means that something like... Stack Attacker's GX attack, which does more damage depending on how many prize cards you've taken, will not do any extra damage. Otherwise, it would do a huge amount of damage. I know it's a GX attack. It's an example, ladies and gentlemen. It's an example.
But please don't go using two GX attacks in one turn. That would be very silly. You're not taking them, you're picking them up. Now, the other thing is here that if you have fewer prize cards in your deck than you have to take, you cannot use this attack because otherwise that would be a rather cheating way of taking prizes. If you had five prize cards remaining but two cards in deck, you would potentially be able to use this Although, to be fair, you would then deck out straight away, so... <laughs> the point is, it is specifically mentioned as something you're not allowed to do. And this is a weird GX attack. Now, it is for one colourless energy on a basic Pokémon, which means it is extremely easy to be able to use this. It means that you could put this into a deck and just very easily search it out of a Nest Ball, attach a single energy, and roll. It is a very techable attack. But is it a good attack? And the answer is, kind of? I mean, look, this is a really good attack when you've got really bad prizes. Because it guarantees that they don't go back into your prizes. So if we look at something like Rotom decks, Rotom decks at the moment is what we've got to essentially reuse our prize cards. So if we look at Rotom decks... Count your prize cards, shuffle them into your deck, take that many cards from the top of your deck. Well, you could end up accidentally putting the same cards down again because you're shuffling down into your deck. Whereas with Celesteela, you're picking up the cards and then putting the same amount down. You're not putting the same cards down again. So if you're playing something like Persimian where you need all of your Persimian and you know that three of them are prized, Celesteela guarantees that you get them all and do not put down another one. Although you could end up putting down all your double colorless i suppose not a brilliant example because persimian is a non-gx deck that really doesn't want to play a gx but maybe you're playing zoroark and you find that all your double colorless is prized so you can use this for a single basic energy get them all out the other thing is that this will give you a great card advantage because what you're doing is you're picking up six cards and then putting down six cards from the top of your deck which means you are ending the turn with six extra prize cards in your hand. This is giving you plus six cards. And yeah, sure, your opponent can play something like a Judge or a Marshadow to redress the balance. But for the time being, this firstly means that your bad prizes are hopefully better. And secondly, you get a significant card advantage. You pick six prize cards up. You've got six more cards in hand. You put six cards down from the top of your deck. That means that even though you might end up putting down new bad prizes, you guarantee that the things that were prized are no longer prized, unlike Pokedex, which could, because you shuffle them back in, put the same ones down. And it means that you get a plus six card advantage this turn. There are a lot of things to like about this GX attack. There are some games where it's going to be absolutely crucial. We've all seen people that literally scoop the game there and then because of their prizes. I once played against a Zeb Striker deck which didn't have any backup attackers and they scooped the first time that they looked at their deck only to find that all four Blitzels were prized. Yeah. Wouldn't have to scoop if they had a Celesteela. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. A really nice ability that's got to be used at the right time. A very standard attack. And a very interesting GX attack that could save the game for you. And that really is the overriding message of Celesteela. It can save the game for you. There we go. But I would very much like to know what you think about Celesteela. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. But please do remember the most important rule as always. Look after yourselves until next time. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Wassy Plays, where we talk Transformers and Key Forge and other fun games. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.